today we will be going to Batangas, Philippines and we're going to be getting my advanced scuba diving license. It's going to allow me to open up the different dives that are available across the world up to 100 feet. Our destination in Batangas is dive and trek. From Manila, it was a three hour drive to the port where we took a boat to the resort. On the boat, I was just thinking how refreshing it was to be back in nature. This is Dive Master Francis, and he's going to be teaching me the advanced portion of the open water. I reached out to them on Saturday, and we're here on Monday, so I appreciate the timeliness. How long have you been uh, coaching? Maybe four years, five years. Oh, awesome. Okay, looking forward to it. All right, guys, we've made it to the hotel room here. We are going to be doing our first dive in about five minutes, and it's gonna be the first time I use this rig here. I'm not sure if it'll work well, but I have the diving housing right here, and then some grips, and then two lights. In the car, Francis mentioned that right outside of the resort is actually a marine sanctuary already, so it's really convenient. On our very first dive, we saw an enormous school of jacks. I heard from many people before coming to Batangas that this is one of the best places to scuba dive and free dive in the Philippines. The people in this area call the circular formation of the jacks, Jack Nado. <laughs> I couldn't quite believe my eyes seeing this for the first time. It didn't feel like real life. I wasn't quite ready for the amount of diversity and underwater life we were in for during my training. Dive Master Francis told me that the last time he saw the jacks in this area was six years ago. How lucky are we to witness the jacks return? During the underwater segments of this video, my goal is to put you into my perspective underwater. Dive Master Francis brought us to what they call the Bat Cave, an underwater coral formation with an opening that we swam through. It also featured a cross above the cave. This was about 25 meters or 82 feet underwater. As a part of my training, I was tasked with navigating Dive Master Francis to the Bat Cave just using visual markers. This is my first time scuba diving in several months. This first dive reminded me of the magic of the underwater world that is constantly living and breathing while we live our day-to-day -day lives. I can't wait for you to discover everything else that we see and do during this trip. All right guys, so we just finished the first dive and it was great. We saw a school of jacks and that was the big highlight of the dive. We also saw a cross and I was able to go through this like little crevice, which was pretty awesome to do. Really good first dive and now we're gonna start doing the skills after we have lunch. It's easy to forget the moments in which you have been truly happy. When you feel immensely happy in a moment, take a mental snapshot of that moment. Who are you with? Where are you? What do you feel inside your mind and what are the physical sensations? Completely immerse yourself in the moment and let every emotion take over. During the hard days and the dark times in your life, you can look back on these vivid moments of happiness in your life in order to reset yourself. Recall everything you remember from that peak moment of happiness and it will calm your mind and give you the foresight that the sadness or grief that you feel right now won't last forever. When I'm scuba diving, I truly feel happy when my head goes below the water. When I enter the underwater world, my mind stays in the moment and doesn't drift away. I believe it's also the dampening of sounds and noise from the outside world. Everything seems quiet, at peace, and in harmony. Dives usually last about 45 minutes. Each dive is a surprise. You never know what you'll see and experience. It's unpredictable and immensely beautiful. Showing you this beauty is something I don't take for granted on the channel, and I truly enjoy it. During our third dive, we went down to 100 feet, and on the ascent, we saw these eels in a bed of sand. As we approached, they slowly disappeared. Deep dives are one of the skills that I need to learn as an advanced diver, but I also need to learn how to night dive. 
All right, you guys, we have just finished our third dive of the day and enjoying the sunset here in Batangas. The next dive we are going to be doing is my first ever night dive. So I'm kind of nervous about it. I don't know what to expect, but I'm gonna take you guys along with me for the ride. I thought that diving during the day was silent and peaceful, but my first night dive demonstrated the power of visual silence. The temperature of the water is at its warmest from absorbing all of the energy from the sun throughout the day. With just a torch or flashlight leading the way, your arrow of focus is sharpened. The first animals that we found were giant clams. They reminded me of my time at the sunken cemetery in Camigan Island. Many marine animals are nocturnal and hunt at night, including sharks and larger fish. Because of this, I can guarantee you that you will see different animals when you scuba dive after sunset. I switched between turning on the powerful diving lights I brought with me and just using the light of the flashlight. Personally, I preferred just using the flashlight and focusing on exactly what the light was pointed towards. The contrast between the darkness and light is insane to witness. In this clip, I demonstrate showing you the corals and pointing towards the open ocean. As you can see, the light gets swallowed up by the immense darkness. I wonder what nocturnal fish see through their eyes each night. The big highlight of my very first night dive was seeing a moray eel. The moray eel greeted us from the front door of his home. We were only able to see the moray eel's head, but it made me wonder, how big is the rest of his body? I'm happy you're here to experience my very first night dive with me. Let's continue our training to become an advanced scuba diver. Good morning, you guys. It is day two of the advanced diving training course, and we are going to be diving here at 7 a.m. The night dive was pretty insane. I've never done anything like that. When I was looking around during that night dive, I could see that there's really just blackness out there and it was it was pretty crazy. And I could see like these tiny little organisms in front of the light. We're gonna start walking down there. I'll show you guys our kind of preparing area where we have all of our gear before we head out into the water. There's Dive Master Francis. How's it going? Morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How yeah. are you? Thank you for teaching me oh, these awesome. past few oh, days. My pleasure. <laughs> Showers here so that you can shower after the dives. I hung my, I hung my gear here, and then we also have fresh water here to put all of the gear after we come back from the dives. Water for drinking before you go out, and then if you walk over here, you have the pier. You can take a boat out to that island over there, there's like a wall that we went to, but also you can just go straight into the marine sanctuary right there. They have all the tanks over here for refilling the air. I'm gonna get ready. I don't know what it was about this simple clip of getting ready, but it made me think of how far I've come in my journey of starting over and creating this YouTube channel. I think it's that fresh morning feeling. The feeling of a brand new day. The objective of this first dive of the day is to descend to 100 feet to a place called the Basilica, then ascend to the cross there. In general, it's safer to dive deepest first because as you dive, nitrogen builds up in your tissues. This nitrogen buildup happens faster at deeper depths. After that deep dive, we ascend to a flat sandy bottom area we call the classroom. Francis demonstrated hovering for me, and then I had to hover myself. To control your rise and fall while you're scuba diving, part of the equation is controlling your inhalation and exhalation. When you inhale, you rise. When you exhale, you fall. There's a short delay in the rise and fall, so you have to take that into account when you're down there. I discussed this with Francis and we agreed that it's an intuitive feeling that you have after you gain a little bit of experience. Achieving that feeling of weightlessness is something I would love everyone to experience at least once in their life. Dive and Trek's restaurant and dining area is right next to the ocean, a perfect place to chill in between dives. We got breakfast and for breakfast we have some champarado, some egg, tuyo, longanisa, and corned beef. 
Same thing for him. Same thing. <laughs> Which diet has worked best for you? I've achieved my best results from intermittent fasting. It takes some time to get used to a new eating schedule, especially if your body is used to having meals at specific times. I found that an 18 hour fasting window is the sweet spot. One thing I don't hear talked about enough is how good that first meal after fasting tastes. That's the huge reward for your patience. I was a bit anxious going into the fifth dive. I had to lead Francis to the bat cave by only using visual markers. Once I saw the batfish at 80 feet, I knew we were right next to the bat cave. I didn't see this during the dive, but as you can see, as I enter the cave, there's a batfish and an enormous puffer fish just chilling inside. To complete the dive's mission, I just had to lead Francis back to the classroom where we practiced our hovering on the last dive. We took a lap around the cross at the top of the bat cave before I took the lead back to the classroom. On the way there, I found a sea turtle grazing on something on the coral wall. Honestly, we were super lucky to see everything that we saw during this diving trip. Batangas is truly one of the best places in the world to go scuba diving. I don't know what it is about these fish at the classroom, but they're so friendly and unafraid. I'm pretty sure they could smell my breakfast or assumed I was there to bring snacks. These last moments on the fifth dive are my favorite of the entire trip. I took a mental snapshot of this moment. Just floating there, enjoying the colors, feeling all of the life surrounding me. This is why I love scuba diving. If you're interested in beginning your scuba diving journey or you're already a scuba diver who wants to continue to advance their knowledge, I've linked Ictus in the description box. You can be trained by Dive Master Francis and enjoy everything that Dive and Trek Marine Sanctuary has to offer. Dive 6 was a different challenge. We entered the water far away from the pier and the classroom. Just using a compass, I was instructed to navigate myself back to the classroom where all the friendly fish live. There's a past version of me that I wish could have seen the experiences that were in store for him in the future. I want to encourage you to film whatever it is you're passionate about. Even if you don't share it with the world, you can look back and remember how far you've come. I enjoyed the challenge and was successful in navigating myself back to the classroom. With my advanced scuba diving license within grasp, I'm already thinking about the amazing places I will take you all in the future. There's so much to see and so much to do to continue to keep this channel growing. I promise to stay consistent and continue to give you all the best videos I possibly can. The final challenge to complete was the hardest of them all. The challenge combined all of the scuba diving skills I've learned up to this point. We're about to go on our final dive of this trip. Francis is out there right now. He set four pin markers for me that I have to find. So I'm gonna be navigating with my compass. I feel like I've learned a lot about diving. I've really expanded my knowledge on all of the skills that Francis has taught me. 30, 10 fins, zero, 10 fins. Dive Master Francis gave me four directions and four distances to follow in order to find the pin markers underwater. I wouldn't be able to get my advanced scuba diving license without completing this challenge. This combined my new knowledge of navigation with a compass, buoyancy control, finning, and generally staying calm underwater and under pressure. I found the first, second, and third markers, but I failed to find the fourth. I was disappointed in myself for failing, but Dive Master Francis revealed that the fourth marker was in his pocket the whole time i'm still mad at him we're just walking here relaxing before we leave dive and trek but i want to show you guys my favorite thing that i've had here as far as food and it's the turon <laughs> the turon here is amazing let me show you guys it's drizzled with this sugary glaze and it's really crunchy when you stay at dive and trek the turon is part of the experience it's complimentary and from the hours of 2 to 3 p.m. you can have to run time near the ocean. This is really their specialty. Mm. That's a staple. Mm. 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 
I want to thank you for making it to the end of the video. Getting my advanced scuba diving license was a huge step in my plan to expand the places I can bring you in the future on this channel. I remember when I was climbing Mount McKeeling last year, I was so grateful to be close to hitting 100 subscribers. At the time, I only had 93 subscribers and I imagined what 93 people look like in a room. This practice helped me create each video you see on the channel. Now, we're about to hit 3,000 subscribers and I know this is just the beginning. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video.